welcome friends once again to another TV Box Top Review. Today's TV Box has an unusual name with an unusual chipset. This is the High Media S500 Fully Google Certified Android TV OS TV Box. This box runs on a high silicon CPU and a Mali GPU on a limited RAM and internal storage at a price point of around $60. This box was primarily designed to play premium streaming services, but in this review, we will see what else it can do. So don't go anywhere, my full review is up next. And welcome back. In the box, everything is white, starting with the box itself. They have provided a Bluetooth wireless remote with Google Assistant's voice control feature. You get one high quality, high speed HDMI cable, a 12 volts, one amp DC power adapter, and a quick start guide. Its design consists of a plastic housing with no branding to the top. To the rear consists of one HDMI 2.0B port, one RJ45 Ethernet LAN port, one optical audio port, one AV port, an IR extender port, a power button and the DC power input. To the side you have two USB 2.0 ports and no SD card reader. At the front, you have the high media branding and the three LED indicators. And below the box, you have four anti-skid rubber feet and a reset button. So I'll just take a moment to set this up on my 4K TV and capture card and continue. Alright then, so the box is connected. And when you start up the box for the first time, you will be presented with the Bluetooth remote pairing wizard followed by the first startup Android TV OS wizard. This is where you'll connect to your Wi-Fi network and your Google account, then you'll be taken to the launcher. The launcher is your standard Android TV OS launcher, running on a certified version of Android 9 TV OS with built-in Chromecast and a Google Assistant feature. The features of this firmware are presented somewhat slightly different to what we usually see on other boxes. Firstly, when connected to my 4K TV, you have 4K display up to 2160p at 60Hz. You have HDR display, however, there are no settings for it and it's always on by default. Under advanced options, you have an HDMI CEC switch, an accessories mode switch, a camera audio switch, an HDCP switch, and a Force 1.4 switch. At this point, I'm unsure as to what the Force 1.4 and the accessories mode does, as there is no information about them found in the user manual. You have a power key definition option. You have built-in Chromecast, Google Assistant feature, and audio output along with digital surround sound audio options in the same settings area. In the apps section, these are the pre-installed apps that you get to select during the startup wizard. So I will install some additional apps needed to complete my review and continue. So I've already mentioned that the S500 comes fully Google certified to play premium streaming services in HD and 4K. However, you will be a little disappointed to know that it does not have the required ESN certification to play Netflix in HD and 4K. The same applies for Amazon Prime Video. Disney Plus, on the other hand, is available on the Play Store and will play in HD and 4K. But all is not lost. If you sideload the right Netflix APK under this certified environment, you will get at least HD 1080p. 
This is not an official Netflix release, but a modified version that needs Google Wide Vine Level 1 and HDCP protection, provided that you are also running Android TV OS for it to work. With that said, I cannot and will not post any links to this modified version in the description. If you need it, you first have to subscribe to my channel, then contact me via tvboxstop at gmail.com to request it. And now, a quick run through of its system and hardware information. The manufacturer is High Media, and the main board is Big Fish. It runs on 2GB of RAM, I believe it's DDR3 memory, and 8GB of internal storage from which this is the remainder after the Android installation and all apps have installed thus far. The Bluetooth version is 4.1. Its CPU is the High Silicon High 3789MV200, which is a 64-bit quad-core Cortex A53 CPU clocked at 1.6 GHz, configured in 32-bit mode with support for only 32-bit ABIs. Its GPU is the Marley 450 with Open GLES version 2.0 support, which is not recommended for gaming. Under Network, you have Dual Band 2.4 plus 5 GHz Wi-Fi support. Its operating system is Android 9 Pie, and it also shows that the box is not rooted. Under Devices, it shows that it has a couple of missing devices, including Vulkan support. Under Temperature, it shows that the box runs around 42 degrees Celsius, but this is a snapshot and not a live feed. Under Codex, you have all the decoders for the playback of HD media, with no Dolby and DTS audio decoders, so we'll see how that pans out during the video playback and surround sound audio test. And that's its system and hardware information. The Android TV version of YouTube is standard on Android TV OS, and it plays up to 4K 2160p quality and in HDR on this box. A popular feature of a certified version of Android TV OS is built-in Chromecast. With Chromecast, you can mirror your mobile device to this box, or you can use the Chromecast feature that's built into certain apps that support it. Here I'm mirroring my mobile phone to the box without issues. And here I'm using the official Chromecast feature that's supported by YouTube. And now, a quick look at its benchmarks. In the A1 SD benchmark that measures RAM copy speed and its internal storage read and write speeds, the results show that the S500 has a RAM copy speed of 2043 megabytes per second, its internal storage has a read speed of 88 megabytes per second and a write speed of 45. These scores are low scores, but expected given the limited RAM and internal storage. The test performed on its Wi-Fi bands and Ethernet LAN speed resulted in the 5 GHz band achieving 100% of my bandwidth, the 2.4 GHz band achieved 19%, and the LAN port achieved 59%. These tests were performed on a network of 150 megabits per second. Its Antutu benchmark registered a score of 45,156. This is also a low score and it's a direct result of its limited CPU speed of 1.6 GHz and its Mali 450 GPU with only open GLES version 2.0 support. In the Geekbench 4 CPU benchmark, it scored 558 single core and 1,529 multi core. These are also low scores, which means that this box was designed primarily 
for streaming movies and TV shows, and not for activities such as 3D gaming. In the 3D Mark Gamers Bench Graphics Benchmark, it only qualified for the iStorm Extreme test that supports Open GLES version 2.0, and in this test it scored 3054. So this confirms that this box is not recommended for gaming. I will now test its 4K video playback capability using my list of 4K HDR videos in various formats. And only a win for Barca would be enough because it would give them the same number of points as Atletico. But the head-to-head -head goal difference is what counts in the case of a tie on points. Surprisingly, on limited resources, this box plays 4K videos extremely well in HDR quality. Seeing that this box has digital surround sound audio options, I attempted to connect it to my 7.1 audio receiver to test for Dolby and DTS audio output. Unfortunately, after numerous attempts, I could not get any digital audio output. What this means is that this box does not have any digital surround sound audio features. For demonstration purposes only, I connected my Bluetooth gamepad to test its Bluetooth stability and I also ran one Android game just to demonstrate that it's not very good at gaming. In summary, the S500 may not be the preferred choice among hardware enthusiasts, but may satisfy the needs of someone looking for a certified Android TV box. Even so, it does not have Netflix ESN and a Prime Video certification to play in HD and 4K, so this raises the question of how useful is this box given its low specs. I'll leave that for you to decide. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. And if you are interested in this box, there is only one link available in the description below. 
So thanks for watching. Give this video the thumbs up if the information provided in this video was of value. If you are new to this channel or you are an existing viewer and have not yet subscribed, be sure to do so before leaving by clicking on the subscribe button along with the notifications bell to be notified when I release new videos and for additional information about these boxes. Thanks for taking the time out of your busy schedule to watch this video. Stay tuned and I'll be seeing you in the next one.